Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you that's very important because you're watching this on the internet. Obviously, you're using some sort of internet-based device, and the topic here concerns the privacy, your personal privacy, when you're using this device. Who's watching you, what they know, and what they're allowed to sell to other people so you can get robocalls that try to market you things. The gameplay soup in the background is Battlefield 1, just because I was kind of feeling like it, and this is still a gaming channel somehow. But in case you haven't heard, in case you've been living under a rock or somebody mailed you this video on a flash drive because you're afraid of the internet and you wear tinfoil hats, about a month ago a bill was passed that removed the privacy protections in place for consumers in favor of letting the ISPs, being AT&T, Comcast, and all that sort of stuff, collect and sell data to other companies. And by data I mean pretty much any data. A rule was going into effect that was passed about a year ago that ISPs could not collect and sell data, and what this new bill did was rolled back that old rule so that there were no rules in place on this, so it's kind of like a big data free-for-all. So as of right now today, your ISP, whatever company you're watching this video on, be it AT&T, Comcast, Time Warner, Spectrum, even your cell phone company, that's an ISP, they can collect as much data as they want about you without your consent. Uh, there's no opt-in policy, and in many cases there's no opt-out. And they can sell it to whoever they want without your consent. Once again, with no opting in or out, it's just they collect it and they sell it, and if you don't like it, that's too bad. In Congress, this was argued to be essential to help spur economic growth for the telecommunications industry and to help job creators, to give them some sort of support. And I do think that it will help some job creators and spur some economic growth inside the already uh, consolidated oligarchy that is the ISP industry, but at the expense of everybody's privacy. Now, selling out your privacy is bad. I think most people would agree with that, but I know that some do not. Some think this is a good thing, and I'll talk about why I don't like it later on in the video. But right now, I want to talk about my interaction with my senator who introduced, uh, co-sponsored, and voted for this bill. When I saw that this passed, I was surprised. I thought that we were smarter than this, but I guess not. But I was very angry. I got online, I started reading, and I found that my representative, Senator Cornyn from Texas, actually got about $150,000 in lobby money from telecommunications industry to help pass this bill along. So of course he voted for it. Not only that, but he's actually one of the more expensive people. He got paid the most and he co-sponsored the bill, which means he helped introduce it. And I guess the price of all of his constituents' privacy is about $150,000. You can find the link down there in the description. But I got mad about this. I don't like having my freedoms and privacy rolled back. I don't like not having good consumer protections because I feel that those are important. So I did the only logical thing that an angry person can do that works and lives on the internet. I left an email. So I went to the website, I clicked the contact page, you fill out your name, your address, and you can write any message you want. And I wrote a very saucy email. Well, saucy is probably not the word for it. I think mean-spirited, angry, hateful, all of those would be more accurate. But it basically went something like this. Dear Senator Cornyn, thank you for rolling back internet privacy. I hated being anonymous online. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to get new advertisement deals from my ISP. I think giving them all my medical records and tax documents and movie preferences will be great. By the way, while you're at it, can you add an inspector general to the post office so that they read all of my mail before I get it? And maybe a GPS tag in my car. I would love to be monitored and followed everywhere I go. That would be fantastic. By the way, this is sarcasm. All of that's bullshit. This is terrible for the country and the environment and blah 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 I can't believe you did this even though I live in Texas I'll vote Democrat next year angry face signed Brad Drifter whatever bam send and I sent it um, obviously that wasn't very mature I know but I was expressing myself as I am very well allowed to do in the United States of America land and I never expected a response. I expected that to go straight to the junk mail filter because it was like shit posting in real life. I mean, it was just, it was pretty trashy. But much to my surprise, uh, Senator Cornyn actually wrote back to me. Now, it's very likely that it was somebody in his staff in the office and not the senator himself, but regardless, it was an email that I got signed by him. And when that happened, I initially felt embarrassed. I felt like a child that got called out for acting uh, inappropriate. I felt like I was about to get spanked with some knowledge. I thought, okay, I was being a tool. He's going to tell me to go pound sand. And if he had told me to go pound sand or jump off a cliff or kill myself or just block me or whatever, that probably would have been a more appropriate response than what I got 
It says, Dear Brad, we're kind of skimming out on the last names here. Thank you for contacting me regarding privacy. I appreciate having the benefit of your comments on this important matter. It's feeling a little bit generic at this point. The internet has driven incredible innovation and economic growth in America and around the world. Very true, why I want to protect it. As a result, consumers increasingly have decided to entrust information regarding all aspects of their lives to companies that provide internet-related services. Also true, you're on a Google-owned product right now. Furthermore, Americans exposed to terrorist propaganda and radicalized online have traveled to the Middle East to join terrorist organizations or carried out Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria-inspired attacks within the United States. Man, that, that escalated quickly. Okay, back on track. Homegrown extremism and the massive online terrorist networks that enable it pose a significant national security risk. It is necessary for the United States to update and reform the law in order to reflect these innovations and modernize statutes with the current expectations of personal privacy and liberty. It is the duty of the members of Congress to ensure we balance privacy and protection and civil liberties while protecting the safety and security of all Americans. I appreciate the opportunity to represent Texas in the United States Senate. Thank you for taking the time to contact me. Sincerely, John Cornyn and all the data down there below. That actually pissed me off because... What in the hell does selling my marketing data have to do with fighting ISIS? I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what, you know, knowing what I watch on Netflix or when I get up in the morning or what I shit post on Twitter about is going to help fight ISIS, but I, 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 I don't, maybe this makes it easier for the government to just buy bulk data and sort through it. I, I really don't know, and it especially discourages me because the bill itself talks about why it's important to balance privacy and liberty when we're really not doing any of those things. We're giving away our privacy and our liberty to essentially even make choices on how we enter a data market of sorts. It Like, if he had told me to go pound sand, if he had told me this was wildly inappropriate and I'll never speak to you again, if he'd got on there and just laid into me, you skinny, greasy ugly, skinny jean wearing, looking, just kind of any, you just want to just lay into me. That would have been fine, because that was rude. But what baffles me is I got a canned response saying that allowing AT&T and Comcast to collect all of my data and sell it to other companies so that they can generate profits helps fight ISIS, when on the Senate floor he was arguing about helping job creators. And at this point, it really occurred to me in my head that I'm just getting railed. Like, I'm just getting bent over and cream-pied, and that uh, we basically all are, that they've been bought, and that's unfortunate. So um, that's what made me so mad about this issue. And what I want to explain to you next, I want to put my little calm hat back on and explain why this is a big deal. There's two questions. Why is it bad if the government watches? Because they do it anyway. And how is AT&T or Comcast any different than Google? We give Google all our data anyway. Why does it matter? Well, we'll start with the last question. The difference between Google and AT&T and Comcast and Spectrum and Time Warner and all of this stuff is that with Google, you have to consent for to use data. When you create a Google account, when you sign into YouTube, when you use Gmail, there's a big user document and you consent to some degree of data collection. At a point, you're consenting or at least understanding that it could happen when you type in the site to go there. And it's not just Google. It can be the same thing. It can be Microsoft. It can be Yahoo. You can go your know, grandpa, AOL. When you go to these sites, you understand that they could collect some data on you, but you choose to go there anyway. And you go through a process of, you know, typing it in and clicking on stuff and doing your thing. The limitation being that it can only monitor you while you're on their products or while you're signed in. Honestly, if you never make an account, they don't get very good data anyway. However, with your ISP, you sign up and they collect everything, every bit of internet that goes in and out of your house like a pipe. That means every cell phone, every computer, every laptop, every tablet, every smart device you have, even some of like the little drones you hook up to the internet, the little easy streaming things, every smart TV you have. If you're one of those crazy people and you have a smart refrigerator or like smart appliances, if you have one of those remote control from home, like change your temperature through your phone, uh, smart home devices, my car, the Tesla, um, all of that goes through the ISP. And you can't not go through your ISP. You can't skip your ISP. You can't bypass them. It has to go through them. And in that case, you would say, okay, well, just, you know, the free market will take care of this. And uh, if you don't like this, if you're not comfortable with it, you can just choose an ISP that doesn't collect data. 
Well, that would be great, except that these companies exist in virtual monopolies or an oligopoly. They, in many areas, there's only one ISP, so you can choose to have that ISP or no internet at all. And the no internet at all choice is not a realistic choice for modern living. The majority of bill pays online, hospitals, medical records, I do my taxes online for the most part. Almost every service is moving online because it's more efficient. In some areas, you might get lucky and have two ISPs, but I guarantee you, they're both going to have the same data collection policies and you're not getting a special policy from them. So at this point, what we've got is a sort of legal monopoly for ISPs both to sell you internet and to infinitely spy on you and collect data to sell you other things. And the next question I'll hear is, well, if you've got nothing to hide, why is this bad? If you've got nothing to hide, then you shouldn't mind people looking. Well, that's not true. As a matter of fact, I did an entire video on this, which is linked down there below in the description, but I'm gonna do the short version here. Even if you have nothing to hide, having everybody know everything about your life creates an imbalance of power between you and the data holders. And that imbalance of power can lead to some very unfavorable decisions for you. For an example, imagine you're interviewing for a new job and we'll say you make $40,000 a year right now and this new job is a very high level job, you barely qualify for it, but you busted your hump, you got the interview and you know that people in this industry make like $80,000 a year, right? So you're hoping to hit that 80,000, you're hoping to double your pay and just nail this. But the company you're interviewing with is pretty clever. Let's say they bought all of your data through your ISP and they raked through it and what they found is that you're only getting paid 40. And on top of that, you're a little behind on some house payments and you got a little credit card debt and uh, they know you need that pay increase. So what they know is that they can lowball you and you're in a financial position to have to accept it. That could happen. It quite literally could. How about I give you some examples that did happen? Not internet related, but if I'm remembering this correctly, Vladimir Putin learned through his spy network that the, I think it was Angela Merkel, or was the Prime Minister of Germany at the time, had a fear of dogs. So during all of their negotiations, he brought his huge German shepherds to sit there beside her during the entire time to rattle her and make her a worse negotiator. Somebody could very easily do this with any of your fears and phobia if they bought your information through an ISP. Facebook already has a problem with some of this stuff. Facebook will send women, uh, let's say, baby shower gifts, uh, baby clothes and stuff, uh, before they're ready to announce their pregnancy so their friends and family see it. Sometimes they can even determine, but based on how they're typing and the things they're searching for and how they're behaving in the social networks, that they're pregnant before they themselves know that they're pregnant. You can Google that. That's a real thing. And when you Google it, know that you're giving Google some of your information. Or recently, Facebook was actually had to pay a fine because it came out that they use psychographics to target vulnerable youths with low self-esteem in order to market products to them that were supposed to be inspiring or uplifting. Kind of like anything that's a lifestyle brand, you can target toward these low esteem people because they'll buy it thinking they can kind of improve their lives, which is completely immoral. Besides all those sort of bad scenarios, it will essentially create an infinite surveillance state like 1984, the book or the movie if you've seen it, the evil big brother, the fascist dystopia. And even at best, it still creates a bad precedent for infinite surveillance, which is not very good. The primary way that this differs from Google again is just the sheer amount of data. I'm gonna use Google as an example because they're the easiest, but there's like 40 companies you could pick from. If you use Google products, they'll see your emails, they'll know what you watch on YouTube. If you stay signed in, they'll know most of the things you're searching and they can build a profile for you. But you can always sign out, you can go incognito, you can use a different service, you can use Gorilla Mail, you can opt out of that. But you can't opt out from this ISP thing. But they'll learn so much. Like, say, with your smart refrigerator, they'll know what food you're eating. If you have an at-home device, they'll know how much electricity you use. Even if you pay your bill online, they'll know how much electricity you use. They'll know your assets, your debt, your income, your medical records. They'll know if you cheated on your taxes even before the government does. They'll know what you like, what you say you like, what you really like, what you dislike, what you say you dislike, all the shows you watch on Netflix. They'll know your porn preferences, which I know everybody flips out about, but more importantly than that, they'll know your dating preferences. They'll know what websites you use to date people. They'll know how to target you where you're most vulnerable when you're looking for an emotional connection. They will know how often you go on dates, how lonely you are, just how much you're willing to pay for different services. They'll know if you're single, know if you're married, 
They'll know if you're pansexual and you have sex with pants. Just joking. I know that's not how it is. They'll know all the people in your relationship circle. They'll also know if you're cheating on your spouse or girlfriend. Imagine if your girlfriend could buy a cheater protection policy to if the ISP ever learns that her boyfriend is cheating, she'll get an alert immediately. Sounds almost like a good thing, but it's still a massive overreach of privacy. They'll learn your fears, your phobias, your likes, your dislikes, your religious beliefs, your how you, who you vote for, your weaknesses, your strengths, all of this sort of stuff. And it creates a massive imbalance of power between you, the citizen, and the company that provides you access to the internet, which is essential for living a modern life. And then the scary thing is not just that one person knows this, but then all of it can be bought and sold to anybody at any time for almost any reason, as far as I'm aware, with the protection that you are anonymized. Names are not fixed to it, and the data is roughly in aggregates, though you do get individual psychographic and demographic profiles. And you're going to say, okay, well, that's not so bad. But no, you can narrow this down. You can search for, let's say, white males that live in Dallas, Texas between the ages of 20 and 25 that have this income level and live in this neighborhood and have this kind of car and every little layer of filter you're trimming it down into a very small number of people and then knowing any other fact about that person like where they work or what college they go to or whatever they can just look to see who connects to those and then bam you found the person your spam your robocalls your advertisements your crap mail all of that's going to explode you're going to get hit up for crap all over the place this can be abused in the business to business scene let's say there's two competing firms and they're working on new products one firm can pay the isp who runs the business for the other firm for all the data that they have and then use that to circumvent them and steal the product or make it better, patent it first, or just build something that counters whatever they're doing. Um, it, it can be used for almost anything nefarious. And I think that this is kind of a big deal, which is why I originally wrote to my senator, which is why I was you know, complaining about it, which is why I made this video, because I think that this is important to you too, because you're watching this on an internet capable device, which means it's basically recording data about you. It's going to do that. It's going to record data that's never not going to happen. But what I would like to see is for that data to be handled responsibly, for it to be erased after a period of time, for it to not be able to be bought and sold, for it to be treated like mail. You have to get a warrant or uh, some sort of request or an information agency to actually need it and justify it instead of, well, let's just take everything and just sell it to whoever and make a bunch of money and yeah, it'll be great don't want that. It needs to have the basic privacy protections that mail does or your home dwelling. Guys, that is all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.